You might remember this video that I made a little series about here on Patreon a while ago. And uh, one problem I was having there, because I was doing uh, the camera motion with my virtual camera rig. I can actually show it to you. This thing that I built to record camera motion in animations. And, uh, you know, that's one way to do it, the, the complicated way, obviously, because it, I was using like um, um, Vibe Index controllers and so on. Uh, and then there's obviously a, an easier way, and that would be apps like CamTrack AR and so on. Uh, this is for the iPhone, um, wh which allows you to record the movements of your phone while you know recording a video, and then you can add that into 3D and have realistic camera motions. I had a problem when doing this because I wanted to have smoother motion because when I'm recording the the camera um, with the virtual camera, there is uh, one keyframe for every frame so you get all this realistic like very realistic like small shakiness and stuff but you don't always want that because sometimes you want to um, because if, if you have one keyframe for every frame in the video uh, that means that it, it will look like you're shooting with a camera that has no image stabilization whatsoever and uh, sometimes you you do want to have that image stabilization effect or even a you want it to look like a gimbal almost um and I was having this problem, and uh, uh, as I explained in this video, uh, what I had to do was to go in and delete uh, a bunch of keyframes. So, for example, if I had, uh, if I removed all keyframes but every fifth keyframe, for example, that would give a lot smoother results. Um, and uh, there was a, a very kind soul helping out um, in the comments of that Patreon post called uh, Matthias. Uh, uh, Dovenspec, I think, this guy. And he actually uh, provided some MaxScript code, which I'm very grateful for, by the way. And, and uh, he, he uh, I, but I, I never did anything with that until now. I finally came around to do it. So I have here a test scene that I want to show you. This is a scene that I actually made for stage class, uh, or <laughs> I did the scene way before, but I used it for stage class. And uh, this camera motion here was recorded uh, in my studio with the virtual camera. Uh, and you can see it's, if I'm playing it here, you can see it's very, you know, it is very realistic, but I didn't want to have all this shakiness. So now using Matthias' uh, code, I have put together something. So in this post, you will see that I have attached the script file. So if you drag and drop this into uh, your viewport, but then you go into customize, customize your interface, and here you'll find a category called VizGuru, and you have this key reducer here. You can just drag and drop it up here if you want to. Uh, I like to uh, change the label as well, like this. And now, uh, I have one problem though. This script does not work when you have keyframes that are, that are in between two frames. And I will show you uh, the problem. If I open the graph editor and curve editor here on this camera, we can see here all the keyframes that this camera has. But you might also see that the frames, the keyframes aren't actually placed on the actual frames. You can see the keyframe is here in between two frames. Uh, and that means that this script will not work. So what you have to do is to select the camera. Um, I don't know if, you, if you're if you using other kinds of way to record the camera, you might not have this issue, but if you use VCAT as I was doing, you will have this issue. So, but what I can do, um, select all the keyframes and click this button here, space keys evenly. That means that it just takes the keys and moves them to the closest frame, basically. So now, if I if I zoom in, you will now see that the keys are now on top of my frames. So I will do this for all my cameras, like that. And now, what I can do, if I have my camera selected, and I run this script, and I can choose how many frames I want to delete, or really what kind of frames I want to save. So for, in this case, uh, I want to keep, let's say I want to keep every third frame. So now I click smooth now, and I will actually get a copy of this camera. You can see down here now that I have a lot less um, keyframes. So if I play this video now, you will see that it is still, I still have like the realistic movements, but 
like all the small jittering is gone. So this is very much like you would have um, a, uh, you know, a camera with an I IBIS or whatever it's called, like image, uh, built-in image stabilizer, stabilization. Uh, but um, I can, uh, let's see here. I actually thought it would show up here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, but I can also, uh, if I want to have more like gimbal kind of shot, I can remove like every 29th keyframe. So if I smooth now, you can see I get every time I'm, I run this, by the way, I, I get a copy of the camera. You can see how many frames it was smooth with. Um, so you can, you know, you don't accidentally screw something up. So now you can see that all like the, uh, um, I can move forward a little bit, like, all this shakiness is completely gone. So this is more like a gimbal. So here, this camera, uh, this camera here is more like a raw without any stabilization at all. You can see it's it's a bit jittery. This camera here is more like, you know, a, 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 a camera with image stabilization in the lens. And this camera here is more like a gimbal or uh, any kind of, you know, like the GoPros or the iPhones or whatever, they have these like hyper smooth where they actually have like digital smoothing um, uh, to make, you know, nice uh, like fluid movements. And, uh, you know, and what I like with this stuff uh, compared to keyframing the cameras manually in 3D, is that you still get these realistic small movements. Like there's still a human touch to it where you can see the, the cameras, like it's, it's like tilting a little bit sideways and so on, which is actually pretty hard to do manually. So here is another one, another example, also very shaky. And let's say we reduce that with 15 just to try it out. This looks pretty nice. You still, you see that we have the human touch to the movement, even if it's uh, it, it's very smooth. And here we have another one. I think this camera is a bit buggy. You can see here actually how because this is uh, when I was recording this with my uh, Vive tracker, it was had it had some it had a difficult time tracking the the Vive controller. But um, let's smooth it anyway, and uh, you see here now. Oops. Okay, that didn't look very good at all, actually. But you can also you can always re uh, delete a few keyframes if you want to. Also, here we can actually uh, if you select all the keyframes, you can click this button down or this little knob down here, and you can pull them out so you can extend the animation. So now. It goes a bit slower and we can actually delete that last one if we want to. So now even though this camera was actually, the recording was totally screwed up, I can still use it. You see, it looks pretty good. I just have to extend the animation and then remove the faulty keyframes and it looks fairly nice. So uh, basically that's it. And um, I want to say a huge thank you to Matthias uh, Dovenspeck. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, uh, but thank you for uh, helping out with the code on Patreon on the, in the comments. And uh, to the rest of you, feel free to download this script and use it. And uh, you know, if you do something cool with it, share it, um, you know, either share it to me on Instagram or uh, post it in our Discord channel, the Texture Supply Discord channel. Uh, that will be super fun to see what you can do with this. Uh, so that's it, guys. I hope you will find this useful. And uh, until next time.